Hi everyone, Tori here. Um, in this video, I will be helping you with the EdTPA in the remote learning environment. I just want to remind you that you can do this. Pearson provided a helpful document with concise additional instructions and this document will be linked in the description box below. There are so many virtual teaching tools out there and I will make a recommendation at the end of this video. And you have time. If you are in the 2020 graduating class like I am, the New York State Education Department is issuing an emergency COVID-19 certificate, which means you have a year to complete all certification exams, including the NTPA, so don't worry. The Pearson document that I mentioned earlier and that I'll introduce soon mentions these two words, synchronous and asynchronous. And the document provides these definitions here. So synchronous means that groups of students and the teacher candidates engage in instruction or learning at the same time. So this means over Zoom or um, Google Classroom, anything that is instructional that is live. And then asynchronous instruction is instruction and communication for which students and the teacher candidate are not interacting at the same time and can work outside the constraints of time and place. This includes emails, forums, online chats, etc. Anything that is not live. So my understanding is that you cannot complete your EdTPA using asynchronous instruction. You will only be approved and able to complete your EdTPA remotely if you are allowed to record synchronous instruction. So that leads me to the first step, which is requesting. So once you are 100% sure that you can or already do use synchronous instruction, you must ask permission from the school principal to record your EdTPA footage online. As long as they approve, you can move on to Pearson's request form. So the next step is to fill out a request form, which I will link below. And in order to be considered for alternative arrangements in a virtual learning environment by Pearson, which just means completing your EdTPA via remote learning, you must fill out and submit this request form. It's very straightforward, so don't be alarmed. So the EdTPA coordinator or administrator must complete part two of this form. So a portion of it is, is to be filled out by your EdTPA coordinator at your college or the administrator at your school that you're working at if you don't go to a college for education. And then um, the EdTPA coordinator or administrator must email this document to the following email. You don't have to send it, they do. And then you will hear back from Pearson within two business days. Okay, so your second step is to read this document, the document that I mentioned earlier. So it is called the Guidance for EdTPA in an Alternative Arrangement Virtual Learning Environment. That's the title of the document. So I highly suggest that you read this entire document. It is six pages, but it's super informative. And if you are doing this, you really need to read the entire document. It also explains synchronous and asynchronous instruction if you're still confused on that. One very important point that they make in this document is that you must still have permission from the parents guardians of the students and from adults who appear in the video recording. So you may have already collected these permission slips for students, and those are still valid if you collected them when you were student teaching in person. Um, if not, then you must obtain electronically signed permission slips from all parents and guardians of your EdTPA class. And make sure to obtain a signed permission slip from your CT2 if they appear in the video. Again, please read the entire document. It provides you with, I would say, vital information and changes to how you're going to go about the EdTPA virtually. Okay. Third, and the last step, is to prepare for your EdTPA footage. So making sure that all of your materials are ready and available. And what I mean by this is that you have to make sure your instructional materials and assessments are prepared in advance and in a tab or however you need it to be ready for video chatting and filming your footage. I would definitely run through and practice your lessons using the software that you'll be using before conducting the real thing, like Google Meets or Zoom or whoever else any other software that you're using for this. And then recording um, a test run and making sure the audio recording works. I would totally recommend testing the recording feature a few days before you record your EdTPA footage. This is especially important for the audio of the video. If you play back your test run video and there is no audio, now you know that you need to either find a YouTube video to help you or to play around with the software to figure it out. This step is super important. Imagine recording all of your EdTPA footage to find out the audio didn't record, because 
that would blow my mind and I would cry a lot. You need to make sure that students know when and how to attend your meeting when you are filming and to tell them in advance that they need to wear school appropriate clothes and are in a quiet place with no distractions near them. Make sure all of the students in your EdTPA class will be present for each recording. If you are worried, then I would definitely, definitely suggest to have a more than four people and more than four students, which is the required minimum in your EdTPA class, or just do whole group instruction. So the virtual tool that I used the entire time in remote teaching was Google Slides and Google Meets. So um, this is the method I personally like to use for instruction virtually. And I would keep it super simple and just go with what you already know how to use. If you know how to use Google Slides, just use that. There is no need to impress the NTPA watchers, graders, with a fancy software that may take you hours to learn. It also saves automatically and there's no way to lose your materials. That is what I love about all Google products because you will never lose your stuff. And I have lost many a Word documents in the past. Um, so once you make your Google slide of instruction, then you can share and present your screen on video chat platforms like Google Meets and Zoom. So I think it's very simple and very easy to do. Okay, if you have any questions about this, please comment below or tweet me at info Ms. K's class. Thank you for watching.